May God bless you all every day of your life. God bless you. You may say to me, Kevin, I want my enemies to see how wrong they are. I want to show them so badly the error of their ways. I want them to feel bad about how they are treating me. What can I do to accomplish this, Kevin? Very good question. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verses 19 through 20. Let's do it. Dearly beloved, avenge. <laughs> Let me highlight that. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jesus. Let me see. Red. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So what is that saying? This is saying, don't seek out for revenge. Allow God to do what he have to against that person. In the expanded Bible, it says, my friends, do not try to punish others when they wrong you, but wait for God to punish them with his anger. Okay, let's go back to the King James Version. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So this is saying that, hey, if someone is doing you wrong, don't treat them wrongly because of what they are doing to you. But Kevin, how can I show them the error of their ways. So if I can't treat them wrongly, how can I show them that they are doing wrong? Verse 20. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him or her. If he or she thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou should heap coals of fire on his head. So you are telling Kev, you are telling me that you want to show your enemy the error of their ways. You want to show them that they are doing wrong toward you. And you are asking me, other than coming to them and saying, hey, please stop treating me wrongly. So you are telling me that you want to show them that they are doing wrong to you. You may even say that you want them to feel shame for treating you in the way that they are treating you now. Okay, the answer to that is continue to treat them nicely. Let me say this, and I pray that this makes sense. What if, let's take a random name, Joe. <laughs> let's say that Joe continues to harass you. Joe continues to name call you, maybe slash your tires, come to your house, and... <laughs> break your windows, you know. <laughs> Maybe he pesters your kids and stuff like that. The best way to get back at Joe, I guess you can say, 
is continue to treat him nicely. Buy Joe gifts, even if he don't deserve it. Compliment Joe as well, even if he doesn't deserve it. Treat that person like an honored guest. I am telling you. <laughs> what do you think Joe is going to think? I continue to be mean to them, but they continue to be so nice with me. Why are they being so nice with me? I am telling you, Joe is going to feel shame. And through that shame, he is going to stop. Man, let me tell you this. There was a person in my family that was doing certain things to me. And I am not going to say like, and people in my family was not doing anything about it, really. And that was making me so mad. Like, you see this person doing this, but you are not going to do anything about it. What is going to happen, that is going to push that person and maybe some more to do more things to me. So at that time period, I was thinking about getting even. Let me do some evil things to this person as well. At that time period, I was not saved. I was not with God. I was not following his rules and regulations. I was not. But when I came to God and I don't want to confuse anyone. But to make a long story short, I believe it was God that was placing like a very, very, very strong urge upon me to do things for that person. Like I could not or that thought would continue coming back to me coming back to me, coming back to me on and on until I did it, until I started to follow those thoughts that was coming to me pertaining to that enemy. Don't you know that? And I believe this, when I started to do things for that person, I believe that person was shocked, was confused. Hey, I am doing these evils toward you. Why are you helping me? Why are you doing these things for me? I did some things that some people, this one guy found out what I was doing for that person. And he was saying, why are you doing that when that person would talk behind your back and did this and did that? Why would you give those things to him for free when you could have sold it and got some money back from it? And I told him, I am not going to sell those things. Those things I gave that person is a gift from me. with everything that I have done for that person, don't you know <laughs> that person's attitude and how that person treats me is light years better. Light years better. Light years better. <laughs> light years better than how that person would treat me before. I can almost say that in some way or form, I guess you can say, that person has respect for me. 
And if you would have seen how things were before and now, big change. Now, is everything perfect? No. You can't expect everything to be perfect with a person who stays in sin. But from back then to now, it is amazing. And this is what I practice with almost every enemy. As they say, kill them with kindness. Kill them with kindness. It works. Not only that, you are going to have some type of influence upon them as well. Look. Everything, let me say this. You do this so that you can draw them to God. When someone sees the light of God within you, as in saying, when someone sees you acting or being the way that God is telling you to be, don't you know you really don't have to preach to them all day long. They draw inspiration and motivation from the way that you live. So when people, when people see the light of God in you, you don't have to say much, not all the time, I don't believe. This is how you draw people to God with love. Of course, some are going to rebel or reject you, blah, blah, blah. They may run or not talk to you ever again, but I am telling you, they are not going to forget how you treated that person. <laughs> I am telling you. So what you have done is sown a seed in their life. I am telling you. So the way that you get back at people, I guess you can say, is by killing them with kindness. Make it your mission, I guess you can say. Make it your mission to give, give, be there for those people. Do what they would not do for you. Do more than they will ever do for you. They are going to notice it. Even if they try to act all tough and have this hard face and stuff like that. All show. Love weakens the heart. Or how can I say that? When someone has a hard heart. When you love them more and more and more. It breaks down that stony heart and makes it more soft. Man, I am telling you something that you can use right now and it is going to work. But some people don't want to do it because they are prideful. <laughs> you have to be humble. Well, Kevin, I shouldn't have to do all this to uh, blah, 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 blah. Look. Repent of your sins, get humble, close your mouth, <laughs> and do as I ask, because this works. Proven, guaranteed, this works. Even if it takes months. I am telling you what you are doing for those people or that person, I am telling you, it is getting inside of their head. I am telling you. Do it. So you should not email me, Kevin, I don't know what's going on. I am being nice and blah, blah, blah. Keep on being nice. You are getting through to that person. Even if that person never re reveal it to you, you are getting to that person. And perhaps because of how you are treating that person, they are going to treat others 
the same way as well. So you are able to make a huge difference in a person's life by showing the light of God within yourself. How can I say that? By people seeing the light of God in you, you can make a change by doing that. So let me stop here. God bless you. Make sure you share this and subscribe. God bless you.